So if you've got a first or second gen Miata and you've got some problems where your headlights don't come up anymore or they don't turn on, we have a solution for you today. Stay tuned. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to notice today, we've got our, uh, our Miata here that we're working with, and when we turn on the headlights, the motors don't pop up anymore. But we can see that the motors still work, because when you hit the automatic override switch, your headlights go up and down. The other thing that we're seeing is when the headlights are up, if you turn the lights on, you can see that you've got your normal low beams that work, but if you go to turn on your high beams, it's just not coming on. It's, it's an issue with a connection that comes from the steering column within your clock spring assembly. So today what we're gonna do is go ahead and look at replacing the clock spring assembly to see if we can correct both the headlights not coming up motorized as well as your high beams not working to resolve a connection that's in there. All right, so for today's project, we're gonna need a few little things, uh, wire snips in case you have any zip ties you need to cut a set of cable ties, zip ties, in case you need to replace some of those. You're gonna to wanna to have a ratchet with a 10 mil socket and a 21 mil socket. And you're gonna need a few screwdrivers uh, if you have a long neck. Phillips head is good. I like using a short head Phillips, but there is a spot you'll need that longer neck. Uh, so I've got one of each of those for myself. And then a slot head screwdriver is helpful in case you need to break anything loose kind of as a mini pry bar for any disconnectors or anything like that so that's all you're going to need it's going to be pretty straightforward and simple now before we get started you want to make sure that you go ahead and disconnect your battery when you're doing this you want to go ahead and remove the positive or negative terminal to make sure that you aren't getting a power source. I generally prefer to remove the positive, even though most places say to remove the negative, either one will work. You can usually tell the difference because there are typically more wires that are coming from the positive terminal and only one wire and a ground point on the body coming from the negative terminal. I remove the positive because if the negative terminal makes contact with any metal, it could give a path to ground to complete the circuit. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and head back to the car to get started. All right, now this is gonna be a fairly simple job. Um, I've been putting it off for a while just because of time, but there's fairly minimal tools required. You may need a steering wheel puller. You can see on my car, I've actually got an aftermarket wheel set up. So I've already pulled that off, so it should be pretty easy to come off on this. Um, but there's six hex nuts on mine. If you have an airbag, you'll have to remove the airbag first. And that's gonna be three or four screws on the back side of the steering wheel. Usually they're Phillips. And on mine, they're hex screws that we're gonna go ahead and remove. Now, when you're pulling off these screws, the removal order shouldn't make as much difference as it will when you're putting them on. And anytime you're doing anything with screws, you typically wanna do a cross hatch pattern when you're putting them on. But like I said, in this case, the removal, I usually go around and loosen them all up. And then I go through and just remove them in any order that we can. Now, like I said, my car doesn't have the stock steering wheel. It's already been changed out. So you can see that we didn't have to mess with the airbag or any of those details, um, but you will have some similarities when you're pulling it off. Like I said, you're gonna have three or four screws in the back side of the steering wheel that'll usually be Phillips. You're gonna have to pull those out in order to get your airbag to pull out. Once you pull those out, you're gonna have several wires in there that connect your airbag assembly. And before you begin this, you always wanna make sure that you go ahead and disconnect your battery like I mentioned earlier. So once that's disconnected, you'll be able to see this right here. And uh, when you come in, you'll see the steering wheel is gonna have a big gap in here and you'll be able to see into the center. So you'll have a connection that typically connects your horn and you'll wanna disconnect that before you pull off the steering wheel. Uh, the steering wheel itself is typically gonna be on what is this hub assembly on my device, and it'll be held in by a nut in the middle. And you'll wanna make sure that you have that on solid when you're pulling everything apart. Um, 
A lot of times for a car that's actually been held, you'll want to go ahead and get a steering wheel puller. You can pick those up from your local auto parts store on rental and you get the money back as soon as you turn it back in. So that's the first thing you're going to look at. I'm hoping that we won't need a steering wheel puller since I've already had this off and loosened, but we'll see when we get there. Once you get to this point, 21 millimeter is the size of the center nut there. So you can see that fits in there solid. You want to go ahead and break that loose. Might take a little bit of force. If you need to use a breaker bar, should be fine. And you don't actually want to remove it all the way but we want to loosen it up, see if we have any play. And it looks like we don't. And sometimes you can get away with not needing a steering wheel puller. If you can get the steering wheel back on there and kind of wiggle this around a little bit to get that loose. Since I've got six different nuts to get that on there, as well as the adapter, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can uh, work this loose by hand. All right, so at this point, I've tried to put the steering hub back together. And we're gonna see if we can break it loose like this. And if this doesn't work, then we will need to go ahead and grab a steering wheel puller. All right, there we can see that we just had that pop and you can see that wiggle. And that's why we don't pull it off all the way because if you end up pulling off that center nut all the way, then when that had broken loose, it would have promptly come up and smacked us in the face and that makes nobody's day better. So now that we've gotten that to break loose, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect these screws again. You can see in there now how that's loose. So we're gonna go ahead and finish removing this nut. First thing you wanna do is make sure your wheels are centered and you've got the top pointing at the top. The steering wheel was already a little bit off and uh, that's gonna have to be handled by getting alignment later on. But uh, the main point is you wanna make sure that you know where this is because the splines won't line back up and you don't wanna be going down the street with your steering wheel not centered. So we're gonna go ahead and finish removing this nut. And like I had mentioned before, if you've never removed your steering wheel, it may be a lot more difficult to break loose than this because it's an aftermarket steering wheel and the original connection was broken at some point. Now that we've gotten this point, you can see we've got this assembly unit here. And this is actually gonna be our clock spring. And that's the part we're gonna be replacing. So if you look here, we've got the piece that we're replacing it with that you can see is a little bit different than what we've got in there. The one that we got was for a model that had an airbag. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use this. Um, and it does have instructions written on the, on the coupler that tells you how to use this. But you'll wanna make sure whenever you're buying a part like this, you verify that it actually will work with your vehicle. A lot of NA and NB parts are interchangeable, but you'll wanna make sure of that before you purchase that. So you can see here, you've got the model with all of your parts. You've got your light knob, which is what we are going to be replacing this for, because behind this, there is actually a module that there are some connections in there that are run by a ball setting. And if those aren't making connection, it won't allow everything to happen. So when you turn this knob on your light switch to turn your lights on or off or turn on your parking lights, or when you push it forward to give you your high beams, there are connections in here that aren't being made as a result of that. So we're gonna go ahead and start with removal on this item. All right, for this next bit, you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna have a screw here, another one here, another one down here. So these three screws should hold that unit on there and we're gonna go ahead and remove those now. Now that we've removed that, you can see that we've got everything accessible. This now pulls off. You'll see that there's a centerpiece here that can actually come loose and it's kind of sprung on there. That's going to be a part of your clock spring assembly. As I mentioned in the part that we have here, 
this section here is not actually on this. So this is going to be the part that sits here on front of that. And this can typically be removed if you don't need it. Um, we're going to go ahead and work on pulling this out and we're going to have to be careful of the wires to make sure we don't remove those. You also want to make sure when you're doing this, like I mentioned earlier, that your wheels are in a straight position and your steering wheel is lined up the way it's supposed to be. And you remember where those marks are. On the instructions, it gives you details on how to rotate this to make sure that it is also centered before you start. So once we go through and set that, we're going to go ahead and be able to get everything lined up the way that we need it there. All right, since we're not going to be needing the airbag portion of this, what we're going to do now is go ahead and center this out. Looking at the instructions, it says to turn all the way clockwise till it stops. And then we're going to come off two and three quarter turns. What that does is it centers our uh, clock spring to make sure that it'll actually turn off your blinker when that's indicating. So now we're going to go one turn left, two turns left, and three quarters. And then you line up the two marks here. And that's going to tell you that we're centered in the middle of the rotation of the steering wheel. Um, now once we get that, we can remove this screw, remove this center piece. And once this comes off, you'll see there's going to be a connector here. We can also go ahead and remove this piece from the clock spring assembly and that'll give us the ability to remove this section if you don't have an airbag. If you do have an airbag, this is going to be what you use to plug into your airbag. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. We've got this screw here. Now this came as a used part. It was reconditioned. So some of the screws are not here, but you can see there was one there, was one there, and one here as well as one up here. So there's four different screws that you'll have to remove if you got yourself a new one. Um, like I said, we went ahead and we centered up our position following the instructions on the tag. And I'm going to see if I might be able to remove just the adapter since I don't have an airbag. I don't like cutting wires. So I'm going to see if we might be able to remove just that clip right there. And it looks like this is actually an enclosed unit, so that's not going to be an option. Um, we'll go ahead and see if we might be able to use this with it on there, because like I said, I'm not a big fan of cutting wires, if I can help it. So we're going to see if this has any way that we can kind of work around this without it interfering with the movement of the steering wheel. Uh, we might have to pull it apart and cut those wires after all. But let's see where we can get with this for now. Now I'm not sure how good the lighting is going to be in here because it's under the dash, but we can see in here there's a couple zip ties that are holding my lower dash on as well as a couple of clips that you can see right down inside of the connections there. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and snip these zip ties so that we can go ahead and get in there. And then we can also see there's a couple of zip ties that were used to hold wires together so that they weren't loose. So we're going to go ahead, cut all those out and uh, see what we can get in there. All right. So now that we've got that center console piece removed, you should be able to get a little bit better shot of what's in here. So we can see here, this is the wire for our horn. And all of these wires are a part of the grouping that comes from the unit and plugs in right here. So there's a zip tie here that holds all that together. We're going to go ahead and cut that out and we'll probably need to go ahead and replace that. Now when you're cutting these cable ties, you want to be careful not to get any of your wires in there. Even though we're replacing the harness, it's always good to make sure you get a good clean cut so you don't have to worry about cutting anything you shouldn't. All right, so here, now that we've got that out, we can see that there's two separate connectors that we've actually got here. We've got this one here and this one here. So we're going to go ahead and try to replace these. 
with the new unit and get that connected. Then we'll reconnect the battery and we'll go ahead and test this out. All right, so we've got the first wire disconnected. Now one thing to note on that last connector, there is a connector on both sides. This one, for example, you can see there's one clip right here that connects right there. And if you press down on that, it loosens it. And on this one, you've got one clip here and there's another clip that looks like it's on the top that connects there. So make sure you're squeezing both of those when you're pulling. Now that we've got the old assembly out, we'll wanna go ahead and install that new assembly in its place. Now we can see on this one, we've got two extras here that are not going to be connected because we did not have those originally. Um, I may end up coming back through and reconnecting one of these depending on what we find they're for. Um, the reason for that being, I assume that these are probably for the airbag, but one of them may actually be for our cruise control because I did get a unit that had cruise control since the car came equipped with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted up now. So now that we have that in there, we're gonna line this up to where it's top dead center and put everything back together. We've got our three screws that we use to pull from here, here, and here. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect those. Now we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver like we did to pull them out. We're just gonna turn until it makes contact. We're not tightening anything down yet. Now before we tighten anything down, I'm actually going to go ahead and we're going to reconnect our battery. And once we get the battery reconnected, we will test the headlights to make sure that this works. Now that we have everything put together, we are going to reconnect our battery. I'm not going to tighten it down just yet because this is just a test before we button everything back together. Now here we are, we've got everything reconnected. First things first, we're going to go ahead and put down the automatic headlight buttons. That'll tell us if the power is working which it looks like it is. Next thing we're gonna do is turn our shift knob for the lights. It looks like we still have a problem with that, so there may be a relay somewhere that's failed. So now that we've got the headlights manually up again, we're going to turn those on, turn on our high beams, turn off our high beams, and we should be in business. All right, now that we know our high beams work, we can go ahead and disconnect the battery again, place that where we know it won't reconnect, and we're gonna go ahead and button everything back together now. All right, now like I mentioned before, we're not sure if we're gonna be able to use this while it's on there. We're gonna have to see if we can figure out a way to make this work with the steering wheel that we've got, and that'll take a little bit of testing to see what we can get. So first we're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can get the steering wheel mounted back on there and make use with it the way that it is before we tighten down our three screws we talked about earlier. Now we're going to take our steering column and see how this fits. And it looks like it will not fit. So we are gonna have to remove that clock spring assembly. This piece actually prevents our collar from going on. So in order to get this to work with our Momo adapter, for our NRG steering wheel, we are going to have to go ahead and remove this piece here. Uh, we're not gonna have an option on that. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and unwind the electrical tape that's on here and see if there's a clip that I might be able to disconnect this from without having to cut the wires. And no such luck. So it looks like we are gonna have to remove these and uh, we'll wanna go ahead and see if we can get a cap to put on here so that we don't have any loose wires sitting out here. Now granted, there's no power supply to these since I didn't connect the other side of the two connectors down here, but we still wanna make sure that uh, just in case those ever do get plugged in, we don't have any crossing electricity that might cause any shorts and cause any circuits to pop or any fuses to blow. So we're gonna go ahead and isolate each individual wire, just a little bit of electrical tape. 
Now, because there's only three screws, it's kind of hard to do any kind of a cross pattern on this, but what I'm doing right now, originally I just screwed them until they touched. Now this time I'm giving it just a little bit of tension, putting pressure on the plate as I go to make sure there's no gaps. Now once I've got them all touching with a little bit of firmness, I'm going to go ahead and put just a light turn. Because you're screwing into plastic, you don't want to use a whole lot of force. If you have any questions, you should be able to find actual torque specs in your manual. But it's just a very loose, snug fit is what you're going for there. Now that we've got that in there, we'll want to go ahead and check for our top mark that we mentioned earlier. Line that up as close to top as possible and put that in there. And you want to put your center nut back on your steering column. You want to make sure that's nice and firm because that is something that's going to be holding. If you ever feel your steering wheel starting to get a little bit loose and feel like it's backing off, you want to check that immediately. Uh, torque specs are in the manual. I haven't looked that up yet, but uh, like I said on my car, it's a little bit easier to get to. So I'm going to come back and check that later. And I will try to put a note in the comments on what that torque spec is. Now we want to go ahead and reconnect our horn. Feed this back in. Make sure we line everything up. Like I said before, we used the center for NRG towards the top so that we knew where our top was when it was lined up. And again, because my steering wheel is already a little bit off and until I get an alignment redone, that'll be the same. So when I'm putting this on, I mentioned in the beginning about tightening in a cross hatch pattern. So what we're gonna do is get all of our screws and I typically like to do every other screw and I put them in first just finger tight as far as I can get them. With your steering wheel, you won't have these screws. Uh, the only screws you should have to retighten after this is going to be for the actual airbag when you're installing that, which would be the opposite of removing. And again, because I don't have an airbag, I can't show how to do that. All right, now that all of those are tightened and finger tight, we're gonna go ahead and take our hex bolt or our hex key. And you can see I'm just putting a very little amount of pressure. I did this, 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 and I'm gonna do here, here, and here. And just get those to where they're actually touching the plate because you can see how loose some of these are. Now once they're all touching, I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top again. Give that just a little bit of pressure then move to the second one, give it just a little bit of pressure, move to the third, a little bit of pressure. I'm kind of using the same pattern I did the first time when I was finger tightening them. All right, now that we've gotten them all there, we're gonna go ahead and give just a final little bit of torque on there. It's usually good to use a little bit of Loctite on these, but again, I'm gonna be taking this apart to go through and verify all the specs here in a little bit, and I'll throw some Loctite on when I do that. Now that we've got this on there, that's our adapter. And that should get us good to go. All right, now we're gonna go back under the dash in a second, but for now we're going to be replacing some cable ties like we talked about. So zip ties or cable ties that we had 
we're around that steering column to give us a little bit better angle. So what we're going to do is take one of these longer zip ties and go ahead and reconnect that. And just like we had in here before, it looks like we're going to need two of these. Get everything bundled together. And because these are just little dangles, we're not going to need those. And to make things a little bit cleaner, we're going to go ahead and cut off the excess. But try to leave enough that we can grab onto it if we need to tighten it later. And the biggest thing there is just to make sure you don't have any loose wires rattling around. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now we can see the reason here that they were using zip ties is uh, both of our bolt holes seem to be missing. So we're probably going to have to use zip ties on that again. All right, now the last thing we want to do is get the steering column installed. So you can see that this wasn't on there when we started because I'd already removed it. But there's going to be three different points that connect to the column itself. One, two, three. And that goes into these three points here. When we are connecting this, we want to make sure that this wire for the horn stays behind all of our screw points. So we don't want it to be in front of these. And we want it to run down in between all of these so that it doesn't get caught up in any of those. Uh, then we also want to make sure that the key tumbler for the ignition is also there. So we want to pull this up and line it up. Make sure you get it behind your base. And you want to make sure that you have your key in there so that you can use your ignition. And then with a Phillips screwdriver, I want to get all of these started. I'm going to tighten the furthest one back first since that's our metal connection. And then these are plastic, so I'm going to back them back out to make sure we have a good seat. And as soon as that's firm, you want to stop. Again, back this out to avoid cross threading. And as soon as that seat's firm, you'll want to stop to avoid stripping out any of those plastic threads. All right, and then the last point you want to do, you'll see there's a hole here, and that is going to need to line up where we had the back piece come through right here. So take that place that on top. There's a few different clips that you can see in there. And if you want to play with those before you start putting it together so you know where they are, that's good. Alright, and for the last screw that holds the top piece on, you'll see you're going to need a slightly longer screwdriver and there's a hole right there comes up from the bottom.
Again, this is a plastic screw, so you don't want to put too much pressure on it. Now you've got your surround in place. I'm going to go ahead and put the steering wheel on. Put the key in the ignition to make sure we have full range of motion with no problems. All right, and the last thing left to do is to get this access hatch door back on. You don't need to remove that, but you can see that uh, it goes in, makes it flush, and you can see your part number across there if you ever need to order that. So now we've got that, and now we can start cleaning up. Now that we've got everything back together and we're cleaned up, we can go ahead and apply power back to the car. And this time we're gonna go ahead and make that permanent. Cover that back up and we're done.